everybody. Welcome to the Cafe of Knowledge. So glad y'all tuning in this week. As everybody know, uh, this week is in our seventh chapter. Okay, um, last week we did um, about the fraud and the inventory cheating and things like that. But this week, we are specifically going to talk about the um, e explaining the budgeting. Okay, um, how to budget a company's money, how to budget your money, all of it ties in together exactly like I was telling you last week. Okay, so this week we're going to touch into the budgeting and the budgeting process of how do we separate the budgeting and how do we create the budgeting process and what does it mean to have a budget? Like, why do we keep a budget? And we keep a budget to make sure that we can keep our bills paid. That to make sure that you have enough money at the end of the month to pay all your bills and have some money left over in your account for whatever you want to do or for whatever the company wants to do you have that extra money in the pot but you have to create or have a budget to make sure that your money is balancing every week okay so now uh when you're doing a budget so since we we know about that but when you're doing a budget Let's say that you're doing it for, we're going to do a quick example for a budget for yourself. And then we're going to do another quick example for the budget of a company, which we kind of went over that last week. But I'm just going to touch base a little bit this week. Now, a budget is when you have calculated all month long. What you have to do is... Whatever you make, we're going to talk about the personal side of it first. So, if you bring in money a month, by the whole month, you bring in money every week, or you, you get paid every two weeks, or you get, you know, a weekly, monthly, however you get paid, by the end of the month, right, you should have enough money to pay your bills, and keep you afloat so example like you would want every month you you want to take first of all to create this budget you are going to calculate how much money you have each month what you make each month approximately how much money you make each month you don't want to take the high number because it could be that you got an extra bonus or you could, you want to take just your regular money that you get a month, just the regular amount. So if you bring it home $200 a week, then that means two, four, six, eight. That means you make $800 a month. Okay. Now, what you would do is if you only make $800 a month, then you will then start looking at your expenses. If you have light bill, if you have water bill, gas bill, you will, your car note, if you have a car, um, your food expenses, you know, things like that. You would take the, the main thing, your light bill, your water bill, your gas bill, your car note, if you have one. If you take the train or the bus uh, back and forth to work. Whatever you spend that month on that transportation, that is what you would have to put down for transportation, okay? So now, uh, you would look at your average bill and see what do you pay each month for each bill. And you would do that. If you pay your average uh, light bill is like $100 a month, you would put light bill 100 gas bill 100 uh, water bill 100 car note 200 okay uh, if it's not a car note and it's transportation transportation 200 you know but the transportation in the car would be the same thing because that's what gets you back and forth 
places each month. So you will have to calculate how much you're spending on each of these things each month, okay? Food, how much do you spend on food each month? And you will put that down there, okay? So, like we just said, you, you make $800 a month, then what you would do is... Now, if your light bill is 100, your gas bill is 100, your water bill is 100, your car or transportation is, say, $200 a month, and then your food is like $100 a month, well, then you got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's $600 a month that you spend each month, and you only make $800 a month, okay? So... You would have to make sure you put those amount aside and then you have $200 left only for the month to spend. That's how that go. Don't sound like a lot, but some people do make just that. And you would only have $200 for that whole month to spend. So you will have, I mean, $200 that whole month to spend. Okay, so that means you really can only spend $50 a week out your money every month, you know, because you only have $200. But you're trying not to spend that whole $200. You're trying to keep at least 100 of that dollars inside of the bank account. So you could spend 100 of the $200, but make sure you leave 100 of it in there. That's how it goes. So, which make you only be able to spend about $25 a week. Okay? Because you cannot touch the money that you put up for the budget. The budget is the lights, the water, the gas, the car and transportation, and the food. You have to make sure that money go in there. Okay? Which is $600 a month. So you know that if you get paid every two weeks, then you automatically know to put $600 in that pot. If you get paid every two weeks, that means $300 need to go in that first two weeks. Then the next two weeks, $200 need to go, uh, $300 need to go in that pot. And that will add up to $600. So at the end of the month, you will have enough money to pay all your bills. Because it takes $600 to pay your bills. Now, if you get paid weekly, what you have to do, you have to put, if you get paid weekly, then you're going to have to say, okay, that means I get paid four times in a month. So you'll say four you see what I'm saying? Four. You get on, you only get paid four times in that month. So you'll say four divided into that six. So what would that give you? Okay? So you want to put about 250 here, 200 here, 250 there, or however you want to do it. But you have to divide it into where you know you could put that money in there. Like I said, if you only get paid every two weeks, then that means the, f the first paycheck, $300 need to go in the pot. Then that second paycheck, $300 need to go in the pot. And then you will have enough, you know, to pay your bills. And then the rest of the money that's left over goes into your personal usage, okay? Your personal plan, that, that's where if you, you know, you get your hair cut out of it and you get your hair done out of it or get your nails done out of it or you can, you know, if you want to go to the movies or something, that's what that's for that's left. That extra $200 that we said that's left, but you own, you don't want to spend that whole $200 that you have left personally. You just take $100 of it, leave that $100 in there, and then you only have $100 to spend for the month, okay, and which is not going to be a whole lot to spend, and that's why people don't like to too much do budgets, because budgets make you cut down on a lot of things, but it makes sure that you have what you need, and make sure that you can go through the process of life without losing anything, 
losing your apartment or losing your, you know, because we didn't even throw that in there. We said light, water, gas, um, food, car note. We didn't even put in the rent. You know what I'm saying? So you might not even have $200 left in there because if your rent is about $300, then that means you're minus, you're in the hole. So then that means you would have to let something go and you can't let light go you can't let water go you can't let gas go you can't let your food go uh but you might have to adjust your transportation which is the car or the bus if the bus costs more than the train then you might want to take start taking the train if the car note is eating more of your money where it's making you into the negative then you might want to adjust your car payments or talk to the people who see can you adjust your car payments or something. Or you might have to just get another car, cheaper car. But you have to stay inside the budget. That's what a budget plan does. Now, it's the same way for a company. Okay? This is what a company does. The company does the same thing we said in the personal thing, but the company just has a lot more on their budget plan and this is why they have a budget plan because they want to make sure they can pay all their bills such as the company will also set a budget and they'll put money aside for the car you know they have company cars sometimes you know they have to put their money aside for their inventory because they got to pay for their inventory every month then they have to put the money aside for the light, the water, the gas to operate the business. Then they have to put money aside for maintenance in case something goes wrong or something happens. Then they have to use that money for that. Then they put money aside for employees because they have to pay their employees because you have to, your employees have to have their money as well. So then you have a budget plan or that for employees you put up that type of money for employees then after all of that what's left over that's what the company keeps okay so that's how that go it's the same way as your personal budget and a company budgeting you budget the same way you just have to make sure it's stick you stick in there with it okay so to create a budget plan is exactly how I told you that you do for your personal plan. You have to see how much money you bring in each month. And then you have to then put on the side your expenses for each month. And then you have to put, you know then, how much all your expenses is for the month, how much you make a month. And then that's when each week... When you get paid, or every two weeks when you get paid, you have to set aside half of that money to make sure that your expenses and bills definitely will get paid. And then what's left over, then that's for you. And that's the same way a company does. Now, a company, what a company does, it looks at about two or three months worth of sales after they've opened. And they look at two, three months worth of sales. They'll, every two or three months, they'll look at how much money they're bringing in. And then they make a budget plan for it. Okay? And so let's say if a company making, like we said last week, if they're making $1,000, say, all month in sales. You know, or every week. Let's say if they make $1,000 every week in sales. So it's four weeks in a month, so that means they make $4,000 a month in sales. Now, what they do is $4,000 a month is their budget plan. So they try to make sure no matter what goes on in that store, they have to bring in $400, I mean $4,000 every month. In order to meet their budget, they have to make $4,000 a month. So, then they start saying what they have to put aside each week to make sure that when the month comes to an end, they have enough money to pay their vendors, 
Then their light bill, water bill, gas bill for their company car, you know, for their inventory. That when people they have to make sure for the maintenance people that comes in, they have to make sure that they have this money covered for that because this is what that's what keeps them afloat. Okay, and then the rest of it they put into the account. So that's what a budget plan is for, and that's why companies are so strict on managers who run the store and everything to make sure that hey, y'all make this budget plan. You have to make about four thousand dollars a month, which is a thousand dollars a week. You have to pull in a thousand dollars a week in this store, and that's why. Companies are so strict, making sure that the managers do that. And they, they try to come up with different strategies and stuff to make their sales be even bigger, that more money than the $1,000 a week comes in. They, they think of strategies that bring their company in more money because they want more money. Because the more money they have, the more cushioned and comfortable they feel with their money because then they know for a fact they have enough to cover that budget plan they have okay so that's the what you do on that guys so just make sure that you do know that so that that's how that goes so that's the purpose of why companies make budget plans and why a person should have a personal budget plan and I always have myself on a budget plan as well each month that never stops if you want to make sure that you keeping all your stuff in line to where you know that you will be able to afford everything and that you don't go over your limit you can kind of go on you can you it's all right to be under your limit but it's not good to be over your limit because that's when people has to have like their car repossessed because they can't pay for it. But if they had out a budget plan, they would have been able to know right off bat if they can afford to add that car to their budget or not add that car to their budget. And if they want to add a car to the budget, they have to make sure that the price of their payments fit inside what they make along with their other expenses. So that's when people just, they just make money and they just spend here. Oh, I want this. I want that. I want that. I want that. And they accumulate so many bills and they accumulate so many bills that outweighs their check. And then they realize they don't have enough. Now they done got their stuff. They done signed on the dotted line. They got contracts with a lot of these things. And then they realize they don't make enough to cover all that. And then that's when they start, well, I'm not going to pay for this this month because I got to pay for that this month. Then I, I pay for this double next month, and then I ain't going to make no payments on this. That's not how you run a business, and it's, it's not how you're supposed to run your personal life. You're supposed to always budget your money so that you will have enough Whatever you purchase or buy, you already know if you can afford it or you can't. And if it's not fitting inside your budget, you have to leave it be until you make more money and, you know, you start, you start increasing your income where you're making more money. Then you can go back and get whatever it was that you couldn't afford to get the first time. Okay, so that's basically the purpose of that. And next week, I'm going. We're gonna do a chart on budgeting. I'm gonna show you a chart on just how it goes, what you should set aside, and how it looks after you deduct all of it, and what you have left in the bank account, and things like that. We're gonna do a chart next week to explain everything that I just said, but I'm quite sure you get the understanding of it. If not, please rewind, refer back, and then you will quite understand what I was saying, okay? So that's basically what a budget plan is, okay? Now, um, you're going to always have where your money is coming in, and, and it's the more 
the the more your income grow, same way with a business. Like if you start getting a raise on your job and you making a little bit more money, the more your income grow, the more you can put more inside of your budget. Um, but the less you make, you can't put a lot in your budget. But when you start making more money and you start getting promotions and you start getting raises, then your budget can go. You say, you know what? I got enough money to have two cars. It fits in your budget. Okay. But if it don't fit in your budget, you have to leave it alone. So that's the same way that a company does. Every time a company business grows and say like uh, six months from now, say one year, they they made ten thousand dollars. Then say the next year they made fifteen thousand dollars. Well, see they made five thousand dollars more. So then they can purchase more because. Their budget says they can because they got $5,000 more. So then they make their budget over with some items that they they can get extra because they made extra. So that's that's how they go. Okay. Um, a company always gather their expenses and how much they make. In order to set that plan and to set a goal. So, like we said, the company goal is that they have to make $1,000 a week because they t it takes $4,000 a month to make sure all their expenses is paid. So, their goal is each week to make $1,000. And that's the purpose of having a budget and setting a goal. Okay, for the company, and you set that goal so the company don't fail, and that's the same way you're supposed to do with your personal business or your personal income. You set that budget for yourself so that you don't fail at whatever it is you're doing. You you know you could keep your apartment or you keep your house and the mortgage. You keep your lights going, your water going, your light, you know your everything going and purchase of food you can manage all these things each month if you're budgeting and you have a goal in your head that i have to put this amount up every week to make sure that i have enough or i have to put this amount up every two weeks to make sure i have enough so that's what that is okay so um your sales budget is that's that I mean that's that's the first thing that a company does is set a goal and set a budget. That's that's just off the top. Ain't no if ands buts about it. Um, a company always have a goal and a budget. And when you get into management, or if some uh, some of y'all are already into management, you know that this is a very important thing that you meet the company goal. You meet the company's expectations. And you stay within that budget that the company sets. And that's the same way you do with your personal thing. Okay? Because you got to look at, you have to pay for your employees. That's production. You know, companies have, they put up money for productions. They put up money for inventory. They put up money for materials. Like, you know, they have to buy register tape. They have to buy pencils, pens, staplers, price guns. Price. They have to buy so much. I mean, they have to buy a lot, you know. So they have to buy these things kind of every month. They have to set a budget for all that, you know. Um, they have to set a budget of time, uh, a budget plan for labor. That means the employees. They have to make sure the employees get paid. And then they have to set a budget plan out for advertising. You know, like they buy big poster boards that they put in the window and say 50% off, uh, 25% off. You know, um, they might have a couple of commercials out that they have to pay to put their commercials on the air. So they have to have a budget line for commercials and advertising. That's, that's called advertising. So... 
it's like all all that right there is what a company has to do you know and then they also in the process of putting all those things in their budget plan, they have to also make sure that at least they have some money left over to put in the bank, okay? And that's the same way that you're supposed to do as an individual with your money, okay? So that's basically uh, how it goes. Um, you always want to make... Have your budget plan set to where when you pay your bills and you have money left in the bank, that your money that's left in the bank is growing each and every month. Each and every month. That shows that your business is doing well and that shows that you are budgeting your own money very well. If you're keeping money for yourself... And then you putting up, after you pay all your bills, you put up probably $100 every month. Then you will see it growing every month because you don't touch it. You don't touch it. You don't touch that money until about after a year. And then you don't touch all of it. You just use a little bit of it. But then that's when your money starts to continue to grow. It, it, it you know, it continues to grow. But you have to leave it put don't touch it. You have to leave it in there. Act like you don't have it. You have to leave it in there for at least a year. And then if you put in a, if you put a hundred, if you leave a hundred dollars in your account each year after you each month after you pay all your expenses, by the end of the year, you will have twelve hundred dollars because it's twelve months in a year. You will have twelve hundred dollars and then that next year. When you study putting up putting money in the pot and it's steady growing, then you can take one hundred or two hundred dollars out of there and or probably four hundred dollars out of there and kind of do a little something that you wants to do with it, but you just continue to be putting money in there. You don't you don't snatch all the oh I got twelve hundred dollars. I'm gonna you snatch all of it out the bank and go buy something for twelve hundred dollars. Now you back down to zero square one and you gotta bill it all back up again. That's not how you do that. And that's not how businesses do that. They keep their money in there and they only they wait till about after a year it has built up and then they'll take a little bit out of it to do something extra. Like they, they might take a little bit out of it. To get the front of the building painted. And then after that. They don't touch it no more. It might be the next year before they touch it again. And that's the same way. With your personal money. You know at the end of the year. And you had $1,200, then you might want it a dryer or washing machine or something like that in your house. And it might cost $300, $400. Well, you take that out and buy that. And then, once you buy that, you don't touch it no more. You got to let it build back up to about seven or eight or nine more months or close to the next year. And then that next year, then you see something else you like. Now the pot has gotten even bigger than the $1,200 because you left, like, after you took about 400 out of it, you got, like, eight left. So then that next year, you put that 12 on top of that, you got, like, $1,600. Or $2,000. It, you know, you just, you, you, it depends on how you do. You got about $2,000 that second year in the bank. You see how it keeps growing? See how it keeps growing? Then you're able to take probably about 700 out of it that time, but you still going to have a lot left. And then you can buy something that you want to buy that's $700. Okay? And then your pot is steady growing. Then that next year... You should have about three thousand, four thousand dollars in your savings, and then that's when you can pull about four, five hundred of it out, and then buy something you want that that next year. And then as you keep going, before you know it, that's when your bank account start growing to four thousand, five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand, because you budgeting your money 
and that's how you planned your money okay so that's the importance of budgeting so that's really all i have today and i just wanted to kind of show you guys and show everyone um to show you all how you budget the purpose of budgeting and what you need to do to budget okay and next week i will be showing you all a chart and we will be going over the chart on expenses what you have what your expenses are what you have left what you should do with that money that's left and how you can make it continue to grow and it's basically going to show you about the business but like we just said i just explained to you how you do your own business but we're going to break out the chart next week and it's going to go line by line and show you about how you budget a certain amount of money and what you have to pay out of that money and then what you have left how to save that money don't touch that money and let that money grow okay so that's all we have today for the budgeting and like we said this was chapter seven uh today chapter seven is that was the opening process of your budgeting and then next week we will do the chart on budgeting which will be chapter eight okay so hope you all have a great week uh stay safe don't forget please like and subscribe please click it uh share the video with people uh you know tell people please make sure if you view it click subscribe that's all you have to do it's free don't cost anything okay and you will see me and jay video come out on sundays and the inventory video always come out on wednesdays so y'all have a great week and see you next week for your chapter eight budgeting bye bye